You, you good? Well, I was uh, yeah. off Broadway there. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'll do it in front of That was a dress rehearsal. Yeah, it's, it's, time. it's five o'clock. Uh, the uh, quorum being present, the meeting is duly constituted, and first order of business is uh, approval of the agenda. May I have a motion and a second? All in favor? Opposed? That carries unanimously. Uh, public participation, seeing none, will proceed. Adoption of the minutes, there being none. We'll proceed. Business arising from the minutes, there being none, we'll proceed. Unfinished business. Seeing none, we'll proceed to new business, 7A. Amending bylaw notice enforcement bylaw number 495, okay. second so, and third. No, wait a minute. <laughs> yes, no, 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 I thought I'm, you were. <laughs> that was my intro. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm all ready to. <laughs> no more adoptions. Um, the amending bylaw number, or notice enforcement bylaw number 495, we actually adopted 492 at the last meeting. And then we realized um, when we went to um, do some investigation on some tickets that a few of the um, bylaw numbers and section references were incorrect. Yep. And that can be quite serious because this is what the bylaw officer refers to when he's writing the ticket. So um, I took the time to go through and I edited all of them and yeah, just well made done. a few um, corrections, but they all tie in now. So we have to do first, second, and third reading again. Do we not have to rescind what we did on Tuesday? No, because it was adopted. So it just becomes a bylaw, and then this oh. bylaw replaces it. So this is it. a new bylaw? Yes, this okay. is a new bylaw. So this is an amending and then we bylaw? Will, we will adopt it at the June 16th meeting. So this Fantastic. is amending bylaw. It just needs first, second, and third So meeting. all this changes the number and, and yes. the bylaws, the, the cross-references. References. Yes, just one or two, which oh, well, actually nine or ten were changed. Okay. So I just have a question. When sure. people are looking through the bylaw, or me, um, how do they know which one is the most up-to-date one? Because that will be the one that's posted. That's um, once um, a bylaw is um, rescinded or just replaced. It's also an adopted then, um, on the front piece too. It does have the adopted, but... How would I know if an old one that was adopted previously is no longer valid? Just because wow. this has an adopted date. Pretty much shouldn't be accessible. I'm thinking that's the case. It like on yeah, the, it be so there's no old bylaws? No, Posted we would it. remove it. We still have an original. Oh, okay. If this is just an amendment to, say, an original bylaw, and that original bylaw we'll is still on there. the website, it actually, if you go into it, it'll say Schedule A, and it will be in red, yep. rescinded to such and such amendment. Okay, so they, with the, date. the previous bylaw is But in this no case, longer. it's completely replacing. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. so when you go to look, I mean, in a historical database, you'd be able to see all of them. But when you go into the website and you see our um, bylaws, it's only the active okay. bylaws. Okay. To avoid that very thing. Confusion. Now, why don't we repeal 415 and make this the new one? Essentially, all we're doing, we have another bylaw to uh, amend an existing bylaw. Is it not better just to repeal the other one and make this the bylaw, so not call it an amending bylaw? Or, or uh, and this, you have to actually break this thing up. So, the overall bylaw is the bylaw notice enforcement bylaw. Mm -hmm. This one is amending that bylaw. And it is number 495 to correct some cross-reference issues. Well, actually, the one it's um, amending is 492, so I think the 415 it's must be quoting just the very original bylaw. It's uh, 415 is, is deleted. And the Schedule A is deleted. Only. Schedule A is, I'm just looking at 415. Right, so the, the original base bylaw is 415. Um, so it still exists, and then this is the schedule to the 415. Yeah, so we've gone from one bylaw to two, which is the wrong No, direction. we've always had two. Even when we had the 492 from um, the last meeting, it still referred to the 415, because it's the original bylaw. Yeah, understood. And this but can't we amalgamate them by rescinding 492 and 415? I think it's just in this case because it's only a schedule and it's the only the schedule that changed the practices to have the base bylaw, which would be a very long bylaw, and just update schedule A. It's like when we do the water rates. Yeah. Um, but the advice of, the, of the, the policy and bylaw subcommittee has been to clean, up. clean it up. So to have the bylaw only reference a schedule that is changed uh, administratively. But let's not mess which with this, the good This thing. is what this does. It's the base bylaw. It's only the schedule. The yeah, schedule but now we a. have three bylaws. 493, 415, and, and we'd have a lot more than that. 415 goes way back. Every year, we re we do a new schedule oh, to do. reflect the new fees and charges. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. So there's really just two. There's the 415, there's two, which there's is two the base. two live ones. At, at any time, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So every year, we update. Same with the fees and charges bylaw. We would just update the schedule. And with remember with the water rates bylaw. It's a long bylaw, yeah. but every year, we just update the schedule that with references the rates. So we yeah. always have two bylaws, but it's that's for the ease of not having to adopt this large onerous bylaw each time. Yeah. It's just the schedule. Okay. Um, any further discussion? Can I have a motion for first, second, and third reading? And a second. 
Uh, any further discussion? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All in favour? Opposed? It carries unanimously. Appointment of the Bylaw Enforcement Screening Officer on page 13. 13. And just the background to this is just part of the adjudication process. We actually didn't have a screening officer, so that's been appointed to the position of Chief Administrative Officer. And in the interim, that will be Nikki and myself. And as it explains in this paragraph, it's just to avoid everything going straight to adjudication. Um, it gives us a chance to screen it, and then if something, you know, clearly something shouldn't have been ticketed or we feel the ticket should it gives be you the killed, power to it do gives it. us the power to do it. And it's just to avoid everything going to adjudication if someone... Um, uh, protested a ticket. Should we not say the Chief Administrative Officer or their designee? Well, by saying the Chief Administrative Officer, I am actually, the Nikki and I actually are the Chief Administrative no, Officer. No, no, I'm saying whether you were to hand it to a staff member or a contractor. This would give you the authority to do that as well. I don't know. I think it's probably better to keep it Chief Administrative that Officer means you just have because to do it's... It. You or Nikki have to do it. And I think that's correct. Like, I think it's a fairly senior responsibility. I'm not sure we would want to delegate it. And if some circumstances came up that we would have had to do that, maybe we could make the decision at the time and just do it for a short period of time, rather than doing something blanket. You mean because in most cases, doing the work for you and coming forward to you behind the scenes with a recommendation as your quick skinny. So there's yeah, the we could that's still true. do that yeah. because for ultimately, a contract it's thing that's a whole different ball of wax. Yeah, I mean, the sign signed by the bylaw right. enforcement screening officer, that's you. That's right. Who did it, the actual work, that's up to you. No, exactly. Okay. I may, um, you know, may go to the bylaw officer and ask some advice, or, but ultimately it's um, the chief administrative officer's authority to rescind the ticket. Okay, I'll call for a motion and a second. Any further discussion? I think it's good. Uh, call the question. All in favor? of the motion that the Village of Lions Bay Council appoints the Chief Administrative Officer as the Bylaw Enforcement Screening Officer. In favor and opposed? Seeing none, that carries in earnest. Thank you. Uh, C, appointment of the Freedom of Information Privacy Protection Act Officer on page 15. I'll read the recommendation. Uh, well, no, Pam, you go. Okay. That the Village of Lions Bay Council resolves to reassign the role of the FOIPA officer to the CAO role. Reassign from who? It's currently with the office coordinator when the position was held by Mandy Kuntz. And we, mm -hmm. we actually realized that when we were doing some FOIPA, and it should be with the CAO. I think that was just in the interim. She had the knowledge, but it will in the future be with the CAO. And it was with her when she moved to CAO, but we actually... Yeah, it was just, okay. this is housekeeping. Yeah. Should officer not be capitalized? Um, given that it's a title. We could. In the, um, okay, so uh, I'll, I'll ask for further discussion now. Anything? Good. So um, can I have a motion that the Village of Lions Bay Council resolves to reassign the role of the FOIPA officer to the CAO role uh, with punctuation as, uh, as discussed? A motion and a second. All in favor? Opposed? Carries unanimously. And appointment of acting CAOs. Again, this was housekeeping. Um, the way it was previously worded, it could have been interpreted that it was just when the CAO was on vacation or away on sick time. Whereas now, I mean, the CAO office is ba vacant, mm -hmm. so that's why it was a wording change, but we felt it was important because of the authority that's being granted to me as the interim and the public works manager that it'd be very clear that we are. Right, so this is, just a, this is just a resolution, it's not a bylaw, so that's fine. So we'll rescind this when we get the CAO, when we place the CAO in the role. Mm -hmm. um, do we not need to say something like any previous appointment or enactment relating to the subject hereof is hereby rescinded to, to get rid of that one that's now wrong? Or not wrong, but superseded. Yeah. I don't think so, because I think this resolution would just, well, just this would be the resolution rescinded. on record yeah, the one was by the strictly when she was on vacation, and this one is strictly during the CAO's absence. So can any? And actually, we'd probably want to keep the other one because when we had the new CAO, we would still want myself and Nikki to be acting in their absence. But this was just to make it very clear that we have we are empowered during this vacancy. Do we want to restrict any powers, like committing the village to more than you know, $50,000? Mm -hmm. Or is the CAA role adequately defined? Uh, they're restricted by the tendering process for two grand. That's true. Mm -hmm. 
So there are other protections in place that we don't need to limit this. I think within the existing role, I think if we didn't have concerns in the existing role, we shouldn't have existing, th those controls yeah. are already there in yeah. terms of ch signing checks. And do we not um, want to say it's the chief financial officer or the public works manager so that you don't have to act in concert? Well, I think it should be Anne because I think we need to work in concert just because we both have our full-time jobs. I think it's, it's too much for one. I, I think it should definitely be both of us in concert. Yeah, but this is almost a signatory thing. In other words, do both of you have to sign everything? No, it just needs um, a CAO signature, and we're both representing the CAO, so I believe it would be either or. So, why not and or? I don't like and or, because which is it? It's either and or or. If one of you is on holiday. Yeah. yeah. Just whichever one is applicable for the circumstance. On the other hand, we can't have two CAOs. So it may be that you have to act jointly. Mm -hmm. I think we're just both covering off the responsibilities of the chief administrative officer in the absence of a CAO. But if one of them is on holidays, then we're well, stuck. What if somebody's on holidays or stuck, on yeah. course or on stuck in traffic? What I'm saying, we're not saying we need both of us. We're just saying we're both in that but role. Then and there is, but there's one CAO role. So yeah, so we're, either of you could be the CAO. Exactly. Because, you but know, But then I'd say vacation. the word is or. So that it cut, because right now, yeah, I mean, it's a nice thing. I, you know, I don't know. How would this get interpreted if somebody started getting shirty? I don't know. They'd say, well, it wasn't signed by both. And the bylaw says, I mean, the, the resolution says and. Well, to me, it is and, though. We're both authorized to act as the approving officer and the corporate officer. What do we think? To me, if it was and or, my concern would be one person would have to do it in its entirety and then not, and then the other and then person not, would, yeah, and we're yeah. clearly doing it jointly. Everybody happy with that? It's semantics, but uh, as we know, you don't need to get the semantics right until you do, and, mm -hmm. and often it's late, too late for that. Okay, so we're happy with the semantics there? Okay, so um, can I have a motion and a second for the discussion? Call the question. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. And update on interim CAO. Is that mine? Yes. Um, I have had discussions with um, Isabel, can't remember her name, last name, can you, Pam? No, actually, I can't. Come, she was the CAO of, um, of Bone for seven years. Um, uh, I have sent you the, the initial take on that. Uh, she, we've subsequently talked, and she indicated that she's available now and that her rate is somewhat negotiable. She, uh, her requirements are only a daily rate, uh, mileage, uh, and accommodation. And the accommodation, she'd be happy with a, a suite or even a room uh, in the village. She very much sees herself as a hired temporary gun. Um, I have sent to Don Lidstone, uh, no, I haven't because I, uh, you haven't seen it yet, it's in draft, uh, a list of names that he agreed to screen from the uh, LGMA database to say whether we should not even consider contacting some of them. The goal is to have somebody in play as soon as, as possible. soon as possible. Just FYI, even though this is jumping the gun on the search committee, we've had some pretty impressive and pretty spot-on submittals to the extent that um, I've talked to two of them, um, just saying, you know, mm -hmm. keep the powder as dry discussed, and, yes. and don't uh, don't do anything without telling us about to it. Express but, our interest. Yeah, but just to express interested. interest. And uh, the the one individual is 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 available now. Mm -hmm. um, they would. Uh, they live on the island. Uh, they would commute weekly. Um, yeah, it's not published, so this wouldn't identify mm -hmm. them. Um, their parents live in West Van. They would stay with their parent. Mm -hmm. um, parents must be getting on because uh, he's uh, in his late fifties. Um, so, the point being, that, promising that we could, in theory, have. A, ha it has to go through the screening process. Mm -hmm. We are going to do all the things we said we we're going to do. Background check, CV verification, blah, blah, blah. So the uh, posting finishes on the 15th? 15th, time. yeah. Well, well the deadline is the 15th. Presumably yeah. we dribbled down to the, the final sound. Well, we got a reasonable one today as well, mm -hmm. actually. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. One we who did. has been CAO of many small communities oh, in okay, Alberta good. and BC. Okay, well, yeah. we'll keep the drift net out then. So the 15th... Uh, got a master's degree in public policy. Yeah, we reported the 15th, so we need to stick to that. But mm -hmm. I had discussed with Mayor Burr, um, with some of the good candidates, calling and letting them know we're interested yeah, just pre because I believe we are in competition with some other job postings yep. out there in the Lower Mainland and um, then start the interviews after the 15th. So Mayor Burr then 
uh, morning of the 16th, what would your timeline look like then? Okay, for, so what's... Well, let's say possible five, top five? Three, four, five, yes. So the search committee is meeting tomorrow. We're going to work our timeline and protocol. Um, we will shortlist based on a round table of the, let's say, dozen submittals in, in, in round numbers. I would say half of those are obvious no-goes. Uh, the other half will need some discussion. We'll shortlist, I imagine we'll have four on the shortlist based on my best guess right now. The committee will then divvy up the preliminary chat, telephone chat. Uh, we'll come up with a list of sort of screening questions. Um, I can't remember what the protocol is. Yeah, shortlist candidates have to have a reference check. They have to provide three references. Um, we will verify elements of their CV, but we won't send it to a professional verification service. And I, there was one or two other things that we, were going, that we said we were going to do for the shortlist candidates. Out of that, the uh, search committee will come up with a recommendation to council that will be presented next council meeting, June, uh, what is it's it? It's Tuesday, June 16th. 16th. Um, no. The following one. The following one, thank you. Yeah, we, we had two weeks to do it. Mm -hmm. That's why we needed a two-week lapse, mm -hmm. not a four-week four lapse. And we could, June 16th, the next meeting isn't until July 7th, I believe. So we could do a special meeting. If, if we had um, to. If we had to. But I think the calendar meeting. works out quite well. So mm -hmm. next council meeting but one, the search committee will hopefully have a recommendation mm -hmm. with uh, indicated salary range. Council will say yes, no, authorize the chair of the search committee, which is not, not established mayor. yet. Well, most likely, I, I, I think it should be the mayor. That would be my recommendation. But um, that's for the search committee to decide. Um, the chair of the search committee will then negotiate. No, in fact, I think the mayor will negotiate. The contract, the deal, the everything, timing. And as I say, the, the reason that I'm saying this under the interim CAO update is it may happen very soon. It's so the first week of July is probably <coughs> on the table here. There are, let's put it this way, there are perhaps an unsurprising number uh, of CAOs available because it's just, it's the end of the honeymoon, people are, you know, investigating their options, new councils have come in play in 160 municipalities in BC alone, let alone, uh, I don't know when Alberta's local elections were. So there's, there's actually a surprising amount of CEOs available. So at what point, um, I apologize, I won't be at the meeting tomorrow because I'm on a course. The interview process, is the entire committee part of the interview? Or there's that initial telephone screening, but the actual sit-down interviews? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't think we will discuss that okay. tomorrow. Okay. I would, I would, off the top of my head, I've seen this works successfully is the two separate people interview them by phone. Mm -hmm. You get two completely different flavors. Mm -hmm. um, no set questions. It's really just a chat mm -hmm. to get a sense of the how it's, it's a cultural fit thing. The, the qualifications are there in black and white, right. and we will verify them. The initial um, sort of interview, but there would still be in-person interviews. Yes, and so yeah. then there would be in-person. Maybe we will bring the shortlist down yeah. by one or two. Mm -hmm. Maybe. We don't know. Um, but then the short shortlist will get interviewed in okay. person. Um, I will decide at whether it's in front of the whole panel mm -hmm. or, or two on one or one on one mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. two separate sessions. We'll see. Mm -hmm. Okay. For uh, next council meeting, you might bring a salary band uh, for in camera to get pre approval on it so that you're not impeded for time. Uh, they actually published yeah. a salary ban in the posting. Yeah, there is a salary ban published. Uh, that may not be adequate may or may be, be excessive. Well, we don't know. rather load the chambers than. Yeah. <laughs> Well, sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, you're putting a lot of horsepower to your committee. I mean, it might be hampered because... You know, it's telling that some responses are not responsive. They didn't give us everything we asked for. They didn't give a salary history, or they didn't give references, or <coughs> it's a hokey-cokey. That, that, that gives you a clue right there as to the level of thoroughness they would apply to the job. The ones that are on the short list in my head already um, were fully responsive. They get it. They understand the challenges of a small municipality in BC. Which should also tie into the salary request. To me, that's a, that's a big one. It's well, qualified so that, as they are. So that was the point. So <laughs> you always remind me what, that I didn't finish my logic. So <laughs> they're... You're an engineer, right? Yeah, yeah I was. <laughs> the salary band is, is very much within our range because mm -hmm. they know the realities of small municipalities. And how you then adjust is vacation. Within reason, because that opens another, can open another nightmare. So get me started. 
So for tomorrow's meeting, could we get copies of all the CVs? I'll send it out tonight. Yeah. I, I don't even know. I didn't get anything today. Uh, just arrived. But yeah, oh, I, I'll okay. put a care package together. Yeah, because I don't even. <laughs> <laughs> when, that, opened. when that email comes to employment at Lions Bay, does, do you just forward it to me? Uh, okay. You, Pam, and Nikki. Okay, well, it should go to the search committee. But so mm -hmm. I'll, I will just package them all up in one email, so it'll be a big, thick email, and send it to the search committee. I just have to type SEA and it goes, Phew, search so committee. So in future, do you want me to send it? May as well. Just yeah. to yeah. you? Or uh, maybe the entire search no, committee? No, send it to the search yeah. committee, search which is with the, the people you mentioned, plus Peter Dorsman, plus Andrew Oliver. And Peter's Councillor Watterson. Okay. I don't have Peter's email. Oh, yeah. Send me his email. Oh, no. I was wondering why you weren't getting no. stuff. No. I got some, and I don't have some, so I well, wasn't I sure what's going on. I haven't been too many more. Your stuff probably stopped when the rates of mine did, so that's, I'm fine with that. This is my non council week. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so. Uh, oh, we get hard Watterson copies of it, so. No, you can print no. out uh, yourself. All right. No, no hard copies. <laughs> Read on screen. <laughs> Huh? Yeah, you actually might want to read them on screen because some you may not, ch you may choose not to print. Here, Bruce, cusping on a record here. Can you go? <laughs> okay, so we're going to move on to public questions and comments. Seeing none, I'll move for adjournment. Second, please. All in favor? Opposed? Seeing none, that carries. Meeting adjourned. Thanks, well done.